and good morning, everyone. Happy um, morning today. Uh, yeah, thank you uh, for joining us this morning. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, we're almost outside. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have our, our, our doors open and uh, filled with crisp, crisp air uh, this morning. And so, man, it just feels good outside. Weather's nice. I pull out the jackets, and uh, for me, it's like a, it's a, a love, a lovey, a lovey dove feeling. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, thank you for joining us this morning um, here at this church um, and uh, our Sunday morning service. Uh, join us at eleven. Also, um, we are. Um, we are also joining Temple Nueva Vida. Um, I am preaching uh, with them, um, for them today. Um, God brought a word. Join us at 11 so that you can hear the message. <clears throat> and again, please like, share um, our post, our, our services. Uh, we need your help, and we can't do this without your help. And so please, again, like, share, um, and um, like our page, follow the page. <clears throat> um, also, we are also on YouTube as well. Um, the the sermon will go out on YouTube as well, um, and um, and then that way you can catch it at any point in time through YouTube for those who um, like to follow YouTube instead. Um, today I brought a special guest. This is Christy, my wife. Oh hey. <laughs> um, nice you know, we were in kind of discussions of, of things, and I felt it in my heart that um, that Christine needs to be speaking. Um, Christine needs to speak. She's a, a, a tremendous speaker. Um, I believe that she's a great motivator. Um, she, uh, I love how she is. She's very uplifting, and um, uh, I've asked her to uh, to join in this morning, and we're going to talk about love today. You know what? love is, the realities of love, and, and, and also what love isn't, you know, we want to hit those, those areas right now, um, because we're in a time right now where love is needed, um, it's just a, a very difficult time, everything's going haywall, and what is actually going to bring us together, bring the body of Christ together, love, what's going to bring unbelievers to Christ, love. And so, so again, I've asked Christy to uh, to share share a message, and uh, I may chime in with God's love and you know, something short and sweet, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but she's going to bring in she's going to bring uh, our word this morning, and uh, uh, and so uh, we'll, we can go ahead and start. Um, and so, Christy. This is not how he originally told me, so he said just to write some little stuff down. So, um, okay, so um, I'm going to start off reading in 1 Timothy 4, 4, and um, if, we, if you guys want, you can go there. Um, I think I'm going to read the whole chapter, maybe, so hold on a second. 1 Timothy 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, um, I have new King James words. Yeah, um, I have to have training rules on my version, so I'm going <laughs> to do the NLT. My sister also says that about. Uh, she she made a joke one time. Uh, she's hilarious. Um, uh, I have a Bible. I have a Bible, and it has like all of the, the like James and and whatnot, and all you know, on the tags. What are they called? The Bible tags. Yeah, well, yeah. And so uh, she saw it once, and she was like, "Those are training wheels for Bibles." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Burn!" I was like, "Yeah, I need them." <clears throat> all right. So First Timothy. Um, 1 Timothy 4. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time 
or the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their um, consciences are dead. They will say it wrong to be married. It is wrong to be married and wrong to eat certain foods. But God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. For we know it is made acceptable by the word of God in prayer. Um, I'm going to take some of this stuff out of context and just read um, this part that stuck out to me. I was um, on the Bible app yesterday, and this scripture just popped up. And just this little piece, um, 4 4. Um, popped out and uh, that piece says, since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. And immediately when I read that little portion of it, you know, I, I, I didn't connect it with food. I connect everything with food. I love food. But um, this is how we should, um, this, is, this is how we should see people who have wronged us. You know, God created them and we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. You know, um, we're ones to say, oh, but God, look what she did to me. And, you know, and our father who is good and knows everything is like, I know my daughter, but remember when, you know, they hurt you, they also hurt me. Or you could be like God. They slandered me. They made up lies. And you would be like, no, I know daughter, but can you trust me, the one who created everything, to address it? Um, I, I was thinking about, like, who do we think we are to try to fix everything in it, like every little? We're like Karens, and we immediately need to speak to the manager when we don't need to do that. You know, the Lord will correct um, will correct everything for us. Um, and again, I'm going to read it again. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. And how do we receive it? We receive it with thanks. And if you're thankful for something, then your mindset changes from it being bad to good. And what is good? Everything God has created is good. So we do not reject things, nor do we withhold love. Um, and, and speaking of withholding love, I was going to just um, tell this um, the story about uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, I, I was at a very low point in my life as a, in, as a teenager. I was um, I was not in a good place. I had tried to actually even take my own life. And um, this beautiful lady named Diana, uh, the, the church I went to, uh, when I was 19, she came over to my house because she wanted to talk to me about what I had tried to do. And um, she came in with full of love and was so kind. And she came in with like, like her beautiful face and she's gorgeous. And here I am, like straight out of the ICU and like, my hair looked crazy, and I was wearing pajamas, and she knocked on my bedroom door, <clears throat> and she wanted to talk to me uh, about, about, you know, about what happened, and I was so <laughs> mean to this girl. I mean, I was so rude to her when she came, so I was so embarrassed that she had her life all together, and she wanted to come <laughs> talk to me, and I, you know, and she is the sweetest person you'll ever meet in your life. And I was so rude. I literally even slammed the door in her face. I told her to get out. And I was just like, you don't even know me. And she was like, I love you. And I'm like, how do you love somebody you don't really know? And, and I was so cruel to her. Well, cut, that was like when I was 19. So, or 18, something like that. So cut to um, two or three years ago, uh, my sister's going to be a part of this conference. And, you know, guess who's holding the conference? And it's that girl, Diana. And uh, um, immediately when I found out that she was the one that was going to be doing the conference, I got so excited that I asked Erica if she could ask her if I could do the photography for the event. <clears throat> Free of charge, nothing, I just wanted to do it. And um, um, she, um, Erica texted me her number, she's like, you know, she said, yeah, but you guys, like, I was so happy that God gave me the opportunity to serve somebody who had tried to pour love into me and someone I was so mean to for something that I shouldn't have been mean to her about and um, that I got to serve, to, I was able to serve her and I remember I was in the car um, leaving uh, worship practice one night and I was talking to Stephen about it 
Um, and I was like full blown crying. So I'm just like, I cannot believe I'm at a place right now where I get to serve somebody um, like her. It was such an honor that God, you know, uh, set that table up for us to even be around each other. Where uh, you know, where I could serve her and kind of, in a, in a way, ask for forgiveness for how I, um, how um, I treated her at that time. And um, um, I, I, I feel like when people act a certain way and you get the opportunity to be in a position where you can serve them and love them, that we should always that we should always um, uh, jump at that at that opportunity. And um, I actually talked to her about this one day, because she didn't even know that this, um, that, and yet she had forgotten about it. I guess she had blocked it out since I was a teenager and I thought I had, I knew everything. And um, she's like, I don't even remember that this happened. I was, she's just, and she's like, you know, if, you know, I apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry that I acted this way. And I was just like, and I was so happy that I got to, to um, serve you that day by, by you know, doing the photography for your event, and you know, and I, it was it was real beautiful. And I, um, I could have taken that opportunity and held onto that grudge and withheld love from her. But as soon as I heard that she was going to be there, and God had set that table for us to uh, be reunited again, ooh, I jumped at the opportunity because um, because I knew it was going to be good not just for me, but you know, for everybody else that was involved to, to see two people united. Again, and again, she didn't do anything wrong. This was completely me, but um, we can't withhold love. You know, how many years have passed by? I never had even talked to her. Or but, you know, God is good, and he set that table up for us, for us to be able to be good. Okay. Say it again. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, I guess we, we can we can actually tie this in, but uh, I, I've been reading, and I'm going to share this little book from here. Uh, it's a devotional that Chris got me. It's called The Love Dare Day by Day. Um, and, and it's it's a it's a year of devotional for, for couples. Um, but um, it is it's not only steered in into a marriage of loving marriage, but also what in what love is. Um, and it's uh, let me just start. And, and it says love seeks counsel. What you know that you, you, that, I guess when you think about it, you really don't pay attention to that. But, you know, love truly does seek counsel. Um, Job 15, 2, it says, Does a wise man enter with empty counsel or fill himself with the hot east wind? Um, although um, the thought of submission in a marriage feels unfair sometimes um, to, to, to many women, the biblical marriage is not one-sided dictatorship. Rather, the Bible instructs husbands to seek their wives' counsel, um, and, uh, living with them in an understanding way. And that's also in 1 Peter 3, uh, excuse, yeah, 1 Peter 3, 7. Um, a husband should know that God has given him his wife to be his helper, Genesis 2, 8, 2 18. Uh, and and that's, that's also true. You know, and, and I don't even think Christina uh, uh, sees this or, or, you know, pays attention to this, but I always do seek her counsel, and, and even if it's just, you know, wardrobe or shoes or, or just anything or, you know, what do you think? Uh, and, and I'm not sure if she, she pays attention to that, but um, I, I do seek her counsel in, in things and, you know, whether we, we may agree or disagree on them, but I do seek the counsel on it. I think that's, a, um, that's, that's important. Um, so let me continue on to to offer unique insights um, he would never think of to share with with him out of the wisdom of God has given her. Often the Lord speaks um, more clearly to women um, than to men. Uh, I, I do think that that I was telling Chris yesterday. I was just like, man, I was just like, you are very knowledgeable. Um, I, I was telling her yesterday, you know, because we were talking about um, callings and, and stuff, and, you know, and, and she was asking about, you know, uh, about her calling. We were just having a small discussion, discussion on that, um, but 
one of the things that popped into my mind, and which is why we're here today doing this, is that I, I feel that she's a great speaker. I, I, I think that she is. Um, I believe that. And, you know, and um, I, I started remembering, you know, based on to on the on, on a service that I heard um, last week by John Beard, that we need to edify one another. And, you know, we're taking some Bible, uh, Bible uh, discipleship classes um, on, on, on beginning your, your home church and, and, and with Pastor Fred Lopez and, uh, and, and if, if we're not if we're not edifying each other what are we doing so I, I have to push her into what I see a potential is um, you know she, she has a gift for, for worship but she also has a gift for speaking uh, and so yesterday she was seeking, she was seeking, uh, and she may not have been seeking intentionally, but, you know, there was the thought of, you know, a, a discussion, a seeking of the discussion of a calling. And, um, and I believe she's knowledgeable. I believe she's more knowledgeable than I am when it comes to scripture. Um, you know, um. I'll ask you just for, for, for me on, on my like for I, I believe in my calling that God gives me, you know, an, an understanding behind behind the ledge, you know, and uh, and he, he's, he's able to reveal uh, to reveal things for me, and and, uh, and you know, but I was I was telling and sharing with Chris yesterday that you know she's she can speak, she's very well spoken, she's she's got her stuff and she knows it. And, and so we're gonna we're gonna exercise as we are today. And we're gonna we're gonna begin exercising even more um, here with Purpose Church, where she's speaking, where she's preaching, where she's you know, uh, and, and we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing this more often where she speaks um, because I believe that there is a gift there. I believe there is a calling there as well. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, and, and, and this this kind of ties into this because it says often the Lord will speak more clearly to the woman than to the man, or at least she will be the one who listens more carefully to what he has to say. When Pilate was deliberating on what to do with Jesus, who had been brought before him for judgment, God spoke to Pilate's wife. Uh, she said to her husband, "Have have nothing to do." With righteous, righteous man, Matthew twenty-seven nineteen. She had the better discernment of the situation. Husbands are not are not lords over over their castle. A wise husband will know how desperately he needs his wife's input and counsel in order to function and lead. And that is true. Um, and you know, and. and and I, I urge you that, that seeking is, 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 part of, is part of the love. Um, truly, when you, when you are truly, truly in an intimate conversation with your spouse or with anyone, when you are seeking counsel, there's love about it. You know, because one, you're, you're, you're bringing yourself down, you know, I, and then allowing the opportunity for wise counsel to come in. That's that's part of love. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the times you play you play games with the kids, and um, I, I see I see our kids playing hide and seek. They're always seeking, um, and, and it's it is it's not the, the point of the game is is that they they, they seek each other um, in in how they interact with each other. Um, and, and I'm not sure if it even makes sense, but you know, I, I can see it on my end, but I'm not sure if I'm interpreting it the right way. But when they're when they're seeking one another, they're seeking the love for one another, and, and not not that it's just the game or a game on it, but it's it's, it's more of them being intimate with each other. It's a, it's a love that that connects. Um. Um. When we are praying to God, we're seeking God. We seek not because we're, we need something, but because we love Him. We seek Him. You know, um, we go back to the beginning in Genesis where um, when Adam and Eve 
to provide the fruit. And the question was, when God said, Adam, where are you? I cannot see you. He was seeking for them. He knew where they were, but he was searching for them. Their spirit. Not because he wanted to question them, but because he loved them. They had messed up. But he still loves them. And he was seeking for them. Um, so prayer is our chance to, to search with anticipation all the many ways God is moving. And that's in Colossians 4. Uh, it tell, uh, 4 2 tells us continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in, with, in it with thanksgiving. When we are full of faith and assurance, um, we can start seeking where God is at, where He's at work. Signs and wonders uh, all around us, like a child scavenger hunt. We, we, we can have fun in the process. But the more that we seek, the more that we find, we become more thirsty for God. When you started dating your spouse or, or in your relationship, I seek her. I looked for her. She looked for me. It was a love. It was a connection of love. And we don't think about these things. It, it, it doesn't hit sometimes, but <clears throat> we're always constantly, we were, we were constantly seeking each other. Hey, what are you doing? Um, you want to go have dinner, or you know, we were seeking one another all the time, every day. That's the same type of love and seeking we must have with God. Is a connection to have with God. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when when Christy had this opportunity to to meet with uh, with her past friend, she had the opportunity and she seeked it. To find it, to make something of this, of this, of this thing, and to make amends, um, and, and, and to and to fix it with love, you know, she offered help, and uh, but she she seeked that, she did, uh, and so love is 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 not just hey and I I love you. It's it's not you know it's more than God just loves you, because God does love you, but there's an extensive measure to that love. Um, here it says here, a shift from being thirsty for answers to being thirsty for the love for the Lord will happen if we keep knocking on the door. <clears throat> and that's one thing that Jesus waits for you. And he's always knocking at your door waiting for you to answer. He doesn't rush in and, and, and say and demands for salvation. He asks for salvation. He asks for your love. But he waits for you to let him in. <clears throat> he seeks you, even though that we run. I ran. I was born in the church, but I ran. I ran from the church because of shame and my history that I had. And so for over 17 years, I ran in the world, in the secular world, um, seeking a love, uh, a worldly love that was offered instead of seeking his love. But guess what? God never gave up on me, and he will never give up on you. He seeks you. He's waiting at your door, just knocking patiently. Um, the thing that we thought uh, we needed uh, have less a hold on us and new desires and dreams start to take shape uh, within us so take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and that's in Psalms um, 37 4 but that's love is love uh, is, uh, is a sickness love, love, love isn't just a, a feeling I think the feeling is 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 just an un and uh, you can say it's it's a natural thing, but it's not supernatural love that God offers. It, it's it's a it's a it's a world it's a worldly fleshly pleasure that we have, um, 
man, I, I, would, I would die if, if something happened to this thing. Um, but me, me emotionally, me physically, me my flesh, man, I would, uh, man, I would, that would kill me. Um, but that's, that's my, my flesh, physical love to not to have her here. Um, but God's love is beyond that. Beyond that. Because He loved you that He seeked to have you. He seeked a way to make a way for you. That He sent His Son to die on the cross for you. That's how much that He seeked you because He loved you. Um, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek his face even more. Hebrews 11. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Do you seek him? Do you love him? That's the question. Do you seek Him? And that's where we want to push you to, that you must fall in love with God that much that you must seek Him daily. That you must seek Him from, not just in the morning or one time throughout the day or when you pray for your food, but from morning until night. Seek Him for every situation. Philippians 4 Love this. Use this all the time. I always go to it. And be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are uh, are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue in, uh, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Seek these things. Continue earnest, earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in with thanksgiving. That's Colossians 4, 2. There's a uh, it's more than just a four letter word. Love is what heals us. It healed a relationship. As, as Christy just shared with you, it healed a relationship that she thought was broken for 20 years. God does the impossible. Things that you think that you cannot do or things that you think you can do, God does impossible things. We we're called to be the peacemakers, too, and so um, uh, to pick, piggyback on on, on that, um, love is a is a choice. Um, we choose whether to give it or keep it. Um, and so, what does Scripture tell us about that? And Proverbs 30, uh, three twenty seven, it says, "Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your when it is your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow." I'll give it to you then, when you already have it with you. Um, so if, if you already have that love of Christ and um, and your neighbor asks for it and you're telling them, like, you know, just come back later, I don't have, you know, I, I don't have time for it right now, um, you're withholding that from them. Um, we're, we're supposed to be ready at all times when the enemy Comes and sometimes the enemy can come in, in the form of a, even you know church members, old friends, um, family members, um, co-workers, or, or whatnot. Um, and I have not yet arrived in this apartment yet, but Lord knows I'm getting better at it. And he's given me a lot of opportunities um, for tables to be set where I can reconcile old friendships. And um, I, I'm one of those people that I cannot sleep. <laughs> You and I are not on good terms. Like it will eat me up. Like you don't even understand. Or if you're upset with me, I I lose sleep over it because I have to have peace between the relationship. And I know this that maybe this isn't something that is okay, but I, I've always just been like this. I have to have peace between people. Um, uh, 
and like I said, I'm not yet arrived at, at this yet, and um, there are some people that I am still terrified of, of seeing. Um, like, <laughs> like there's some people that I, I don't want to see just yet because I don't know how I would react, and you know, so the Lord hasn't. I haven't had even the opportunity to even see this, these people yet, because um, I don't know, honestly, I don't know how I would react. I would hope that I would react in a godly way and put scriptures to it. And, you know, I, I've been in situations where I thought I wasn't ready to see somebody yet, and I was, you know, I, I was like, oh, okay, you know, um, I'm going to go up to them, I'm going to give them a hug, I'm going to, you know, love on them, and it opened, it opened the doors to reconcile with people. Um, but, you know, like I said, there are some people that I'm just, I, I don't, in my mind, think I'm ready, like, uh, um, to, to quote the great philosopher, and then my palms are sweaty, <laughs> knees weak, arms are heavy. Audrey would be so disappointing in, um, in me right now for that, <laughs> that out wrong thing. Anyways, what is it? Palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There you go. Um, I would be nervous about, about seeing some people, but um, hopefully I would react in a way that is godly and not, you know, act a fool and, and, and go BC before Christ and, and, and just act in a manner that is ungodly and unholy. Uh, um, but like I said, I, I, um, I know that God is good and that God will set tables when, when he knows that we're ready for it for, um, and that we'll end up making our Father proud and, and how we act and how we behave. And, and again, we should always just strive to to keep peace with people because in reality that's love, you know, loving somebody that's hurt you or wronged you. Um, and like I said on on Tuesday, um, advocating for them, me and their defense attorney and being like, okay, well, why are they acting like this? You know, um, did they have a bad day or are they going through something? Is, is or, you know, what's going on? And, um, and if you know in your heart you didn't do anything wrong, then obviously it wasn't really about you this whole time. It has to do with something with them. Um, um, sometimes people are also under bad leadership and they behave, behave in a certain manner because that's what they're being taught. Um, and we got to be forgiving about that, you know, that, you know, we're not all perfected and we're not, we don't have it all together. Uh, but man, we are perfected in Christ. But, you know, we're perfect. We're perfect through Him. But you have to have Him. Um, and God is love. And he loves each and every single one of us. He loves the person that you're upset with. He loves them. Um, I can't remember the scripture, but it, um, it's, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, um, that I'm just blank. Um, Stephen's mom sent me a picture of him right now, so that's all I can think of. <laughs> I'll show it to you all later. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm blanking out. Um, that if, if you, it's more or less like if you're upset with somebody um, and you, you're taking out your revenge out on them, the Lord will, you know, will not look at that and look at what you're doing instead. I'm, par I'm paraphrasing. Um, um, and I don't want that. You know, I think about that all the time. Like, I don't want to take things in my own in my own hands and um, and then God get upset with me when, you know, he's like, what are you doing? You know, he's, you know this, this is my job when you take care of it. Um, and it. But, you know, it's hard for us to just hand things off to people, too. Um, um, it, we, we're, we like to be in control of things. We want to be vindicated and, you know, we want, you know, for things to be like, well, you wronged me and you did this and this and that. But it's, and it's not, it doesn't help at all. And uh, I've noticed that uh, um, in certain situations, God, the way God handled the people that have wronged me was way, way better than what if I would have done. You know, like, um, he does it in a loving, kind way. And uh, the way I would have handled it probably wouldn't have been so loving and kind. Um, and pretty much just, guys, we got to keep seeking peace with people. I mean... We gotta keep peace. I mean, if, if somebody's telling you not to be at peace with somebody, that's not okay. Um, we have to seek that. You know, it's biblical. You have to be the peacemaker so that we can inherit the earth or the kingdom. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, just last, last couple of scriptures that I have here in Psalm 63. Oh God, 
You are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. And the last verse that I have is in Psalms 37. 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You're delighting yourself, you're seeking him. You get to enjoy him. He is your joy. Um, but hey, uh, we, I think we're, 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 we're done. We have to think we're just about done the today. But, uh, but thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, and uh, thank you for your support. You know, I ask that you just like and share our page, um, our church's page, for Purpose Church. Um, we need your help. Uh, but please do so. And uh, leave comments. Please. We want us to interact with you one another. Let's chat. And so, but hey, we'll see you again uh, next week. Uh, as we prepare a great message for you as well. Hey guys, God bless you guys. We love you. Take care.